Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com and we'd love to talk to you about hosting your remote telescope under our dark skies in southwest Utah. And what I want to talk about today is some work I did on this image of the Sombrero Galaxy. And in particular, uh, the focus today is going to be talking about dealing with some dust spots. Uh, so let's switch just quickly to PixInsight, which is where I did the uh, the basic image uh, calibration, registration, and integration. And one of the things I did, uh, kind of a little side note here, uh, these are the 18 light frames, so it's really only about an hour and a half of data with five minute subs. These were done with a one-shot color camera. And normally, when you use a one-shot color camera, you would set it to debayer the images so that you wind up with an RGB color image at the end. In this case, though, if you look at the under the Configuration tab on the Post Calibration in WBPP, there's a drop-down for debayer, and the default option is Combined RGB. And what I did in this case was I chose Separate RGB. And what that does is it tells PixInsight to separate the red, green, and blue channels and then register them separately so that the red, green, and blue are all perfectly aligned. That If you don't do that, sometimes you can get some odd color fringing where the different colors focus at uh, different, different focal lengths. So that you actually get some red and blue fringing around the stars. So that's a little side tip for that. Uh, we can close this. And this is the resulting image after stretching it with the uh, arc sine H, so the inverse hyperbolic sine stretch. Uh, I like that because it keeps a lot of color in the stars. Uh, but you'll notice there are some, some circular dust spots that the uh, flats didn't take out. And I don't know if I didn't grab the right flats or you know, what the reason is that, that those didn't get removed in the process but they didn't and they're easy to deal with in Photoshop and that's what I want to go over so let's switch back to Photoshop and let's look at the image that I basically just saved as a 16-bit TIFF from PixInsight and opened it in Photoshop and the first thing I want to do because it bothers me that it's hanging upside down is I'll just quickly do a uh, image rotate 180 degrees. That that looks and feels better to me. And let's look at these dust spots. And they're particularly tr troublesome because they cross over into stars. So if I try to use something like the clone stamp, I'm going to be you know tinkering with the underlying data, and I don't want to do that. But if we think about what happens here, this is really just a dark spot where the the field is darker than the surrounding area. So what we really need to do is just lighten this area so that it blends in. And there's a number of ways to do just about anything in Photoshop, but the way I like to do that localized uh, lightening and darkening, which in photo terms would be called uh, dodging and burning. Dodging would be lighter, uh, burning would make it darker. The easy way to do that is to do it on a separate layer so that we're not changing our background layer at all. So I'll just add a new layer using the shortcut icon at the bottom of the uh, Layers panel. And this will create a new blank layer. And the thing I want to do here is go to the Blending Options, which right now is set to Normal. And I want to change that to Soft Light. And the reason we use Soft Light is it has the, the properties that if there's anything on this layer that's lighter than medium gray, it will lighten what's below. <clears throat> and the brighter it is, the more opaque it is, the more it will lighten what's below. Anything dark, darker than medium gray, will darken what's below. So I can very easily grab my brush tool, which I use the sh keyboard shortcut of B, and if I use 100% opacity, and let's just start by tapping the D to get our default colors over here in the, cup, in the uh, tool palette, and the X key will just switch back and forth between white as the foreground color and black. And let's just start with white as the foreground color. And if I adjust my brush using the left and right bracket keys so that it's about the size of that, that circle, if I draw on it, you can see that that's 
much too aggressive. So, and actually I have the pencil rather than the brush, but it's the, the same principle. The brush tool would just be a feathered edge, but it's still much too strong. So let's undo that. We'll just go back in history to where we changed the blending mode. And rather than 100% opacity, let's drop it down to 10% opacity. Now there's about three ways you can do it. I can click on the drop down and slide this back and forth and get to a lower or higher opacity level. I can use the number keys. For instance, if I tap 4, it would give me 40%, 3 is 30%, 1 is 10%, 0 is 100%. And if I want something less than 10%, like 5%, I can tap 0, 5, and that'll give me 5% opacity. And now if I paint with white at 5% opacity, and just trace around that circle, that almost gets rid of it completely. I can go over this area again, and that one is essentially gone. I haven't changed any of the underlying data. The star is still there. The satellite streak is still there. Uh, hasn't changed anything other than it brightened that dark circle. So now it's just a matter of going around to the different places where we have that issue and it seems to work best if you use a fairly low opacity, like in this case I'm using 5%. Uh, sometimes I'll even go down to 2% and just work it in slowly. This one is quite a bit darker so I'm going over it multiple times. And you might wonder, what's the difference between opacity and flow? The key difference is opacity, if I have it set to 5%, no matter how long I paint over something, or if I go back and forth like this, scrubbing back and forth, the most it's going to give me in one mouse stroke or one mouse click is that 5%. Now, if I make 100% flow or 100% opacity and let's take our flow down to 5%. Now with a low flow it will continue flowing as long as I hold the mouse button down and if I go back and forth it will start to build up. So it's only putting down 5% at a time but as I go over and over spots they get brighter and brighter depending on how comfortable you are with a mouse or if you're using a, uh, a stylus and a tablet like a Wacom tablet uh, you can get even more precise control using the brush tool and a very low opacity and a low flow <clears throat> and just kind of gradually build it up. Uh, I generally for this it's simple enough that with a, uh, a low opacity uh, you can deal with these pretty well. So we, I would just continue Get this back to where I was for opacity and flow and just go over these and uh, lighten them up so that they blend in with the surroundings. So here's another one and that's all there is to it. Uh, yes it takes a few minutes to do this but you know, how long did you spend uh, polar aligning your telescope before you started imaging? If you think of it in relative terms to, uh, you know, relative to other tasks you might do, it's really not that difficult and not that time consuming and the end result is a much cleaner result than if you tried to use a clone stamp or something like that. Of course you can also use it to to highlight features within your uh, your image. If you go too far uh, or you need to darken, you just tap the X key. So for instance, if I, if I paint with white <coughs> and that gets too far, I uh, just tap the X key, switch to black, and go back over it and blend it in. Now I might want to highlight, for instance, this outer dust ring on the Sombrero Galaxy. If I have black selected and just paint across the the rim a couple times. We can heighten that area and, and give it a little bit more contrast. So there's lots of lots of ways you can use this. And here's some more dust spots over here. 
easy to fix. The last thing I might talk about here is the satellite trail. And I could probably spend a lot of time trying to find um, stacking parameters in PixInsight that would effectively remove it, but it's real easy to remove again in Photoshop. Uh, <clears throat> especially in this case, it's, it's crossing a few stars, so we need to be a little careful of that. And what I'm going to do is go to the background layer, and I'll just quickly unlock it here. And let's grab the spot healing tool. And if you click and hold, you can see the drop down that there's a spot healing brush, a healing brush, a patch tool, and some others. And for this one, we want to use the spot healing brush. And again, we'll use the bracket keys to make it just a little bit bigger than that satellite trail. And since it's a straight line, I can click at one end. And I'm going to just come up to where this star is on the middle of the track, hold the shift key and click and that'll draw a straight line connecting those two points and that took out that portion of the satellite trail now let me click on the other side of the star come up to this background galaxy shift click click again shift click click and we can go all the way up to here and then again, click and shift click, and the satellite trail is gone. So just that easy matter of well, maybe 30 seconds to work along the length of it. Um, usually I'm working on nebula rather than galaxies, and usually I'm working on a starless image. And in those cases, you really don't have to be careful about stars at all. And it does a real good job of going across uh, nebula features uh, without obliterating the, the nebula so you can do it even faster. So those are my tips for today. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments down below. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under clear dark skies. Thanks.